At mile 21 of the 2024 London Marathon, Kananisa Bekele and Alexander Mutiso Munyao were running together, having just dropped the last of the other men. Munyao went on to win. Can differences in their running form explain how he beat Bekele? I'm Jay Grunke, founder of The Balanced Runner, and I've been helping runners and triathletes from beginner to Olympian improve their form and performance since 2003. I have slow motion video footage from just past mile 21 of the marathon. So let's take a look at that and see what we can see. So if we look at them from the side, you can see a difference in the size of their leg action as they're in perfect step here. Here you can see that Munyao's swing foot is a bit lower than Bekele's. Uh, but everything else looks pretty much identical in terms of trunk inclination, body position over the foot, arm position. So let's go forward to the next stance phase and now you can really see a big difference in the swing leg and the swing foot. So Munyao's is much lower than Bekele's and the foot position, the ankle position, is significantly different. So Bekele has always had a high back kick and his foot is quite plantar flexed, so his toes point backwards in this position in the air, his ankle is extended like a dancer pointing their foot. And Munyao, by contrast, has his ankle already almost flexed to 90 degrees, which is very unusual to see in an athlete of this caliber, especially an East African athlete. A lot of American and European runners run this way, uh, but uh, it does not appear to be slowing him down. Very often an effect of doing this, of flexing the ankle the way Munyao is, is that it also tightens up the hip flexors and shortens the hip extension, uh, reduces the hip extension. So let's go a little farther and check hip extension on that leg. Really comparable on the two men. For some reason, Munyao's ankle position is not having the knock-on effect it normally does. So now going farther, uh, let's have a look at how they're going to land, so their foot strike. So here you can see their, their feet are positioned differently. Bekele's foot, we, ha we have to speculate where the foot actually is inside the shoe, but best guess, Bekele is going to land on with his the sole of his foot pretty much parallel to the ground, and Munyao has a much more flexed ankle at foot strike as well. And that would seem to be a negative thing, but in general, this factor is overemphasized. So if you look at the leg that is attached to the foot, <laughs> is about to hit the ground, the knees are almost flexed almost identical amount. And the foot is positioned in a very similar relationship to their bodies. So they're both landing with what I call a supple leg. So it's not a ramrod straight knee. And as they move into um, foot strike and then uh, early stance, you're going to see that their legs do pretty much identical things, despite the fact that their feet contacted the ground differently. So I put this in the category of differences that don't make a difference. But you can see the swing leg again, that big difference that I've already pointed out. So coming forward again a little bit, we'll watch them pass through stance and into flight. And even though the lower leg action is quite different, flight is pretty similar. Um, at this point, Munyao is uh, starting to speed up his cadence a little bit to try and overtake Bekele, so they're not quite in identical phases of their gait cycle just now. There are some interesting differences in their hands, actually, and we'll talk about that in just a moment when we have a front view. But what I'd really like to look at here is a difference in their torsos. So they've got a relatively comparable forward lean or forward trunk inclination. So from the pelvis through the upper body into the head, they're on a similar angle. But for Bekele, you can see that he's got a different rib cage and head organization than Munyao has. 
and this is something that I think is quite significant. So you can see that the, his lower ribs seem to be pushing forward a bit, almost as though his back were arched. We don't see a big arch, and he does have a large rib cage, but looking back at footage from him in earlier years, you don't really see his rib cage push forward like this. So I think it's something that he is doing and not just his body type. And again, you do not see that at all in Munyao. And then connected to this, their head positions are different. So bakele has got his chin down a bit and Munyao does not. So you can see, and in fact, you can see, if you look closely, Bekele's sternocleidomastoid. So this muscle here stands out a little bit, is activated, and Munyao we don't see. So when the sternocleidomastoid is visible, we know that the head is either pulled back a little bit that, or pulled down, that that muscle is having to activate uh, to control the head and the rib cage, and it tends to actually cause the rib cage to lift a little bit. So very often you'll see that muscle stand out when a person's head is a little bit back. And now let's go forward just a little bit more to compare their shoulders as they swing their left arms forward. There. Munyao's shoulder is much higher than Bekele's. You can see Bekele's neck, you cannot see Munyao's anymore. And it is actually probably a bit farther forward. From our angle, we're um, a little bit behind Bekele. And so we see his back a little bit more, but I think if we had exactly the same angle on the two of them, we would see that Munyao's shoulder is actually a little farther forward than Bekele's. And the significance of this is gonna become clear again when we look from the front. So let's do that now. I just want to take a moment before we do that to let you know. Uh, sometimes people watch these videos and wonder what I would see if I analyze their form, and I can do that for you. So there's a link to book that video analysis with me down in the description below. So if we take a look at the broadcast footage so we can get a really good front angle, even with this, this still image, you can see a huge difference in how their arms move. and. Um, that was not clearly perceptible from the side. So you can see that Munyao is organized to have his hands go really in line almost with the um, shoulders of his vest, quite far from the center line. And bekele has got his left hand pretty much aligned with his sternum because his ribcage is turned a bit to the left. So hand really coming to midline. So they're not at all in the same phase of the gait cycle, but if we just play this footage now, you'll get a sense of how the movement works. So again, Munyao really almost like he's going for a straight forward and back kind of arm swing as people are sometimes coached to do. And Bekele not doing anything like that, but as he always has, bringing his hands close to midline. So we'll look in a moment at how exactly Munyao is making that arm swing work because it does look so awkward from the front. But before we change angles, I want to take another moment to look at what Bekele is doing. So we're going to look at this footage again, but a little bit slower. Uh, it's going to be pixelated because it's just the broadcast footage. Um, but you'll be able to see he does something different with his right and left arms. And there's a relationship to that feeling of his chest being pushed forward. So you can see his right hand is open and does not come all the way to his midline. And his left hand, not fully closed either, though more so. And again, coming to his midline and his chest turns, his upper body turns left much more than right. So he's got an asymmetry going on. His legs seem pretty symmetrical. So it doesn't seem to be bothering him. I guess just shaking his arms out there for a sec. Um, but that is probably connected with some past injury. I'm gonna go back again and just show you. So the hands, again, much more coming to the midline than Minyao. However, not fully. If his fingers were curled into soft fists, his hands would be falling a little bit short of midline. And they're a little bit low as well. And all of this is because 
It's as though he's pulling his shoulders back just a little bit in a way that pushes his rib cage forward. And so this is part of this whole system of chin down, chest pushed forward um, that uh, we're going to understand a little bit better when we look at what happens to him just after crossing the finish line. So now let's take a look at Munyao's approach to the finish line uh, with a shifting angle to get a sense of how his arm swing is working and how his gait is working overall uh, despite the front to back arm action and the very flexed ankles. So here you can see that his shoulders are actually, we, we saw that shoulder lift, the up and forward movement. Uh, he's really turning and lifting his shoulders quite a lot relative to what he's doing for his, with his arms. And this is how he's balancing his leg action and getting a long stride, is that he's actually using his rib cage and even his shoulder girdle to really get his weight off his back foot in each case and move uh, as though he were swinging his arms well, even though they're pretty low. And I do wonder if he wasn't coached to do this with his arms because he keeps changing, especially with his right arm, what he's doing. And it's not just about looking at his watch. So that's a possibility there. So here we have the two men after having crossed the finish line and Bakele is the one who's bent forward. Watch what he does next. That, right there. And then a moment later, he goes on to do something similar, stretching out his lower back by lifting his leg and then bending forward, putting his hands back again. So the message is clear that he has his, uh, some lower back discomfort after finishing this race. And this fits with the way that his head is down and back a little bit, his chest is a little bit lifted, his hands are a little wide and a little low. Uh, I believe this is also something that he's known to have a little bit of difficulty with, some low back tension or discomfort. But it really slows you down, <laughs> as any runner who has struggled with low back discomfort can attest. So you don't have quite as good a lean if your head isn't forward, uh, if your chest is lifted, um, and then if your shoulders are pulling back and you're fighting the lower back pain. All of this could actually be coming from his deep hip flexors, his iliopsoas muscles, which may be just tightening a bit, a little tighter than is optimal for running. So given all of this, I think it's pretty clear that Munyao didn't win through superior form, though he was able to correct for issues that normally would slow a runner down by moving his upper body very well. But I also think that the minor issues with Bekele's form, which are not brand new in this race, they've been showing for a few years now, resulted in him running a little slower than his fitness perhaps would otherwise have led to and could have made the difference between first and second place. So uh, it's still great to see him running so well. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree and what else you see in these two men's form. Also be sure to check out this playlist of all of my elite running form analyses, including Cissé Lemma in the Boston Marathon right before this race. And be sure to check out all of the resources that I have for you in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and may all your running dreams come true.